Yeah. Okay. So uh, the Cambridge Food Hub, I, I think, differs from a number of um, other sort of open food network food hubs in that we're primarily addressing uh, a B2B market, so it's, uh, business to business. And what we're um, what, we're, what we're trying to do with the food hub is actually put sort of infrastructure in place um, which facilitates direct trade between local food enterprises. And, uh, and we, we, we've got a, a sort of an innovative new sort of approach to food supply chain coordination, um, which I've actually, I've actually just uh, written a book about uh, it, and the book's called Local Food Ecosystems, How Food Hubs Can Help Create a More Sustainable Food System, uh, which isn't out just yet. It's uh, uh, the, we're on the final stages. We're just having the cover designed and uh, but that should be out shortly. But um, so eff effectively what we're doing, so we're putting infrastructure in place which, which facilitates direct trade so um, and we're using the open food network as the platform for facilitating those trades uh, and then the food hub itself also provides the logistical infrastructure i.e storage space and um, and vans and sort of people who drive the vans to uh, to go and collect, collect uh, that produce from local farms and local producers um, bring it back to base, uh, aggregate and collate uh, customers' orders, and then go out and deliver it. Uh, but then the the sort of the the USP behind that is, um, as I say, some some specific techniques in supply chain coordination. So we're we're doing things like um, enabling recycling of certain materials, um, reusable packaging schemes. Um, obviously, coordination of supply routes to minimise um, food miles, um, and and perhaps perhaps the the concept of what we've been doing is quite well demonstrated by um, by one of our sort of leading schemes that we 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 sort of started off with, which is what we call our green coffee shop scheme. Uh, now, with our green coffee shop scheme, what we've been doing is delivering products to local coffee shops, uh, primarily uh, an organic barista style oat milk. Um, but then when we're at the coffee shop making that delivery, we collect their used coffee grounds. And then we'll take those used coffee grounds up to a recycling plant, um, which is near Huntingdon called BioBean and BioBean turn those coffee grounds into coffee logs. And then, of course, the, the, uh, we come back with the coffee logs, and the coffee logs themselves are another of the products that we distribute. Um, now, the, the, the critical things about what we're sort of demonstrating with that, that that's a, then a circular um, delivery route. So our, critically, our van is never empty. Um, so you've eliminated empty van miles. And, and, and also the, the coffee grounds, which are being recycled, that they're, they're, they're a resource that um, it wouldn't normally be, it wouldn't otherwise be economically viable to transport those coffee grounds because they're valueless in monetary terms. So you couldn't just send a van around the coffee shops, pick up the coffee grounds, take them to, to buy a bean. It, it just, um, you know, who, who's going to pay for the fuel in the van and the person who's driving it, et cetera. But by, um, by doing that at the same time, uh, you know, the van's already at the coffee shop, so it's no extra effort to go and collect those coffee grounds. And li likewise, if we were selling the coffee locks, we'd, we'd be sending the van up to buy a bean anyway. So by triangulating that route, um, you're doing things a lot more efficiently. But the wh where, where this sort of then, um, uh, yeah, b before lockdown obviously coffee shops closed during lockdown one and that disrupted uh, our things but pr prior to lockdown one we were having tremendous success with this we were actually collecting over a ton of coffee grounds every week and this was actually enough for us to start dividing the hall uh, so half of those coffee grounds went to biobean um, for making into coffee logs the other half went to a local organic farm 
where they were composted and also used as a medium for growing oyster mushrooms. And the critical thing about that is that that then starts to give you a little glimpse as to the, the what I call the local food ecosystem concept, because we, what we, we started off with oat milk, coffee grounds and coffee logs, but now we've brought in organic veg and compostable material into the equation as well. And if you that, that as you expand that out, you sort of start to glimpse the potential of the local food ecosystem concept when you sort of bring all sorts of other um, recyclable materials, other food products, um, et cetera, in, into the mix. So, um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, the local food ecosystem and what we're trying to do at Cambridge Food Hub um, in a nutshell. Um, with regards to sort of how it all came about, how we set it up. Um, so I, I guess it's all started on the back of a, a much more established business. So I've, I've been running a, a, well, I started a business called the Cambridge Organic Food Company um, 23 years ago. And that's uh, that's an organic veg box business. Um, so we're, we, we, we deliver it. Lot, um, coronavirus has been pretty good to us, actually. We're now doing about 1,300 veg boxes each week. Um, and that's put us in the sort of this good situa uh, financial situation in order to be able to go ahead with the Food Hub build project. Um, but but I, I, the... the Cambridge Organic Food Company, which just does, you know, it's a, um, you know, it's a conventional for-profit business, um, and having that sort of established base has enabled the Food Hub um, project to, to sort of grow out of that. So, yeah, um, have I have I talked for long enough? Is is there any thing that I've missed out or? Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. And I'm just like in my brain trying to envision what a ton of coffee grounds looks like. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty full van. Yeah. A, a, full a big, van. big sort of VW transporter size van. Yeah. Houses. <laughs> and, yeah. and you should see that the mount, I, I will describe it as a mountain of coffee where we, where we dump it. You know, it's a, it's bigger than a house. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of big pile of coffee grounds. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I wonder what it smells like. Does it still smell good? Does it start to? Um, I, I don't know if it, if it necessarily has a particularly strong aroma, but what what does uh, when when you go up there and sort of dump them out, which is pretty grotty work, I've got to be honest with you. But the the thing that interests you is uh, is you can hear like crickets. They have all sorts of crickets that really sort of love living in the pile. So if, it, if it's quiet, if the machinery is off, you hear this sort of like little <laughs> thing going on. So. And they love coffee. <laughs> Lots of caffeinated cricket. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think, Kate, were you raising your hand then for a question? I was. Duncan, how many employees do you have? Um, we've, we've got 30 people working for us at the moment, but they're, they're not all full time. There's, um, you know, there's a lot of people who just sort of do uh, a couple of three hour shifts each each week. So I, I'm not sh quite sure how it sort of would work out as a full time equivalent, but we've certainly got